Cloud's Last Session is again a 2023-2024 film because it got a little bit of a wider release in January of 2024, but it was hitting some festivals uh, before that. Uh, Sony Pictures Classics uh, got the rights to distribute this film to a wider audience, so it hit some small theaters and uh, got a chance to watch it. I don't know if it's streaming currently, but I did get a chance to watch it when it hit the theaters. And small ones, but it's playing here and there if you can find it. I don't, don't quote me if it's streaming or not. If it is, I, I don't know if it is or not. But uh, this is one that I don't think, no, there's no Oscar buzz on this one. But um, actually, now that I think about it, it did kind of pop out of nowhere. I remember seeing like posters for it in, in the local indie theater that I go to. But um, yeah, it, it did come, kind of come out of nowhere. But uh, this has um, Anthony Hopkins and Matthew Good. Matthew Good is a British actor. Matthew Good is also the lead singer of Matthew Good Band, and he's from British Columbia, but that's a different Matthew Good. I did get confused. Did anybody else get confused? Because as soon as I saw Matthew Good on on the screen, I'm like, Matthew Good? Like, Matthew Good Band? No, it's a different Matthew Good. Matthew Good from BC uh, doesn't have an E at the end of Good. British Matthew Good does. So that was a first for me. I just wanted to throw that out there. But... Um, I'd, I'd never really seen him in anything else, so this is kind of the first time I heard of Matthew Good, the British actor. Um, but this film is a very quiet kind of uh, conversation film. It's very talky, like through the whole thing. And it's about Sigmund Freud's life. I'm trying to pronounce that correctly, I, just by what I've heard. And um, he, he was like a ph ph philosophist, I guess. He was very into philosophy. He was very, like, analytical mind scientist kind of thing. I'll go with, with philosophist, if that's a word. I don't know, maybe I sound like an idiot. <laughs> a film reviewer. And Matthew Good plays C.S. Lewis, the author of the Narnia books, which I found really interesting. And they're just having a conversation on philosophy and believing, not believing, God, atheism. And they start getting into like um, the morals of sexuality and stuff like that. And it's just an in-depth conversation of them meeting. It takes place in 1939. This is um, like either days or a week at most before Germany invaded Poland. And Sigmund Freud uh, is at his home, his den, and Matthew Good comes over, C.S. Lewis, and they just start talking. And of course there's flashbacks and stuff like that and we learn about both characters, especially Sigmund Freud. And um, his uh, relationship with his daughter, he has a very, like, um, de very complex, I should say, uh, without getting too spoilery, um, relationship with his daughter. And there's just traumas with his past. He's also, like, developed this it illness, so he doesn't have much longer left. And uh, it's, it's, like, it's just a movie about a deep conversation. So if that turns you off from it, then I wouldn't even bother. But if you like your art house kind of uh, talky cinema, um, I thought this one was really deep and really well-developed. Now, I looked at the scores, and they're very, very mixed. Like, Rotten Tomatoes gives us a 45%, which, when I see a film like this so well-produced with, like, Anthony Hopkins in it, for Christ's sake, um, you like, it's just... You would think it'd be in at least the high 70s, at least. 45 is, like, damn low for a film like this. And it's not deserving of that. It deserves way more. But um, I think maybe that's because it plays with a little sprinkle of fantasy elements because there's some, um, not dream states, but there's moments where they reflect and there's moments where they think about things that are part of the plot which kind of play out um, thematically and in a kind of fantastical way. Very, very brief. Like, Northman did it, for example. Northman, the 2022 movie, um, the Viking one, Roger, Robert, e uh, Robert Eagers, um, played with that a little bit too, with the, the Norse mythology, Nordic fantasy scenes here and there. This film does that, but it does it even less. So it's not overbearing. It's not like this is like a quarter fantasy or anything like that. It's, it's nothing like that. This is quite the grounded film. And I think it's acted tremendously. I love when you get two people on screen and their performances just captivate you, regardless if there's a lot going on or in this case, they're just in a room talking. 
uh, you get a really passionate discussions and then you throw in those very, very controversial and very divisive topics to go along with it and you get like both people's opinions and they just know how to deliver their lines and, um, you know, perform tremendously. It's, it's really intriguing in my opinion if you like that kind of thing. I've seen some films similar do it extremely dry and do it in a sense that doesn't resonate with me at all. This one did resonate with me quite a bit. Uh, it is very complex. A lot of the things are um, spoken in such detail with such big words, sometimes pretty fast, where this could use with some subtitles. I didn't watch it with subtitles, but uh, uh, sometimes, you know, like you'll miss a word here and there and you're like, oh shit, what? I, I gotta rewind that to catch that because that sounded really deep, but I want to like get everything that they're saying. Um, so it's, it's good in that way if you're into that kind of thing. I think this is a really well-made film. It has, um, its differences. Like, it's not, um, I don't want to say it's not grounded. I don't, I don't want to jump into too much of the fantasy, because fantasy is the wrong word. Even though it, it's been described by others, uh, like, ha as having fantastical elements, I would just say, like, euphoric elements more so. Like, it's, it, it doesn't play like a straight-up talky, like, it's not like just two men in a room. It's not like the whale in that sense. Um, although now that I think about it, the whale did kind of go euphoric in, in certain ways too, kind of. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it could be compared to the whale. I don't know. Um, I love the whale too, by the way. I, I don't ask, don't try to get me to the, compare the two because they're so vastly different in themes. Um, I thought both were pretty on par. I couldn't I'd have to watch both literally side by side to say which one I liked better than the other but uh we're to talk about foods last session so <laughs> it's it's really good I had a really good time with this and know who you are going into it but I will definitely say it's a very philo philosophical film that plays with great ideas and are led by two really great actors Anthony Hopkins enough said when it comes to that kind of stuff so um and if you know other Sony Pictures classics films then you'll know exactly what kind of film this is because it's a purely it's the kind of film that they would obviously pick up just like you know what kind of film you're getting into for a24 you know what kind of film you're getting into for sony pictures classics so it's a good one great performances great film uh if you're ready to sit down and have your mind kind of if you like the heavy stuff verbally it's really good Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you'd like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. I'll be back with more soon, so stay tuned for those. Check out what's on the channel already. Stay tuned for what's coming. Until next review, have a good one. Take care and cheers.